Good evening. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Um, I hope you had a great day. I had a very productive day of um, filming and recording worship. And obviously I'm back in my workout clothes, but looked very professional earlier today. Um, but for tonight, I want to read one of my favorite stories in the Gospels. And that is when Jesus feeds the 5,000. Um, and so we will be in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, um, if you'd like to follow along. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for all these people to eat? He asked this only to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each other for just people to have one bite. Another of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, he spoke up. Here is a boy with five small loaves and two small fish. How far will that go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There were plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to the disciples, gather the pieces that are left over and let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So obviously in this time and in this pandemic, I know all of us have been anxious about having enough. Will we have enough? Provision is definitely a fear. Um, I know we have dealt with a job loss in our family. Um, myself and every other pastor I know is always praying that we will have enough money um, to meet our monthly budget for the church and the ministries to continue. There is a question of, will we have enough resources for going back to school? Um, enough. Will there be enough? And in tonight's scripture reading, in the Gospel of John, that is what the disciples are worried about. How will we have enough food to feed all these people? You know, it's so funny because it says 5,000 men. Jesus feeds 5,000 men because people always recorded how many men there were. They never ever recorded the women and children that were also present. So. It was probably closer to 15,000 people, just 5,000 men. So with that many people on the Sea of Galilee, right, in Tiberias, you have to think to yourself, oh my gosh, as Jesus' disciple, you have to think to yourself, how are we going to do this, right? Um I remember hearing a fantastic sermon um, by Pastor Albert Tate at the Global Leadership Summit several years ago who preached on this passage. Um, and he said, this scripture teaches us to give God what we have and get out of God's way. 
So I'm going to say that again. Give God what we have and get out of God's way. Um, I have been blown away time and time and time again in these five months how God has continually provided. God has made a way where there seems to be no way. God has provided for me, for our church family, for our community in ways that are truly miraculous. Um, the generosity of the people and the family of Hope United Methodist truly bring me and our finance committee to tears um, because it's so powerful and it's so incredible. Um, so tonight, loved one, what are you anxious about? What do you feel like you just aren't equipped for? Maybe you feel like you don't have enough expertise. I know a lot of friends who are just anxious about school and the semester starting. I know people are anxious um, and in the midst of transitions with work. Maybe after getting laid off from a job, they're applying to new jobs. Um, there's just a lot of uncertainties right now just like there has been a lot of uncertainty since March. I feel perpetually like I don't know if I have enough of what it takes to pastor and be what the congregation needs. And that is just the lie that I hear in my head that I constantly have to rebuke and silence. Because the truth is, we simply just have to give God what we have and let God do the rest. Give God what you have, whether it be your time or your talent, whatever project you're working on, whatever ministry you're volunteering for, whatever labor of love you have. Maybe you were giving God your very last hope of a relationship with a spouse or a friend and you feel like you've given it everything that you've got and you're like, I don't know if there will be enough. Remember that our God is a God of infinite blessings. Our God is a God who took two little fish and five loaves and multiplied it to feed 5,000 men and who knows how many other women and children. 15 to 20,000 is my guess. So there's always more than enough in the kingdom, always. Um, and we don't have to, we actually aren't supposed to have enough on our own because that defeats the purpose of the necessity of needing God. God wants us to need him. Jesus wants us to come to him and ask him for help and be in fellowship with him. So today, as I think about all of the things, I'm like, I don't know if we are gonna have enough volunteers or financial support or time to pull off an outdoor VBS. I don't know if the school district will have enough time and resources and teachers and funds to be able to get things going for school. There's lots of worries that we all have, but we don't have to have it all figured out because we have a God who knows how it's all gonna work out and how it will all miraculously multiply. God has a way of taking our offerings and multiplying them for his glory. 
So know tonight, loved ones, that whatever you have is not enough. And it's not supposed to be. But with God and with you together, it is always more than enough. May we see loaves and fishes multiplied before our very eyes this week. Amen.